Prynhawn da, a diolch am y mino. Good afternoon all and thank you for joining. I'm Claire Roberts from the Communications and Engagement team at Qualifications Wales and welcome to the first webinar on our Qualified for the Future consultation, The Right Choice for Wales. This is the English language webinar ac mi fydd sesiwn Gymraeg am trihanar awr wedi tri a dydd llun y cyntaf o chwefror. We are all well aware of the major challenges to learning and assessment posed by the continuing COVID-19 pandemic and of the pressures placed on learners, their families and their teachers. Our immediate priority is to do everything we can to make sure learners are assessed as fairly as possible in these difficult circumstances. And colleagues are working hard with the Design Delivery and Advisory Group, whose members are head teachers and college principals, and the WJC on the best solution for learners in these unprecedented times. And we are also working with Ofqual and SIA on finding the best solution for three country vocational qualifications. Regular updates on summer 2021 are available on our website. However, despite the pressures of the here and now, we cannot lose sight of longer term aims and responsibilities. And as the draft curriculum bill is making its way through the Senedd, we want to continue the important debate about its impact on qualifications. Through this consultation, we hope to give learners and schools a better idea of what the main qualifications in Wales could look like to help them think about and prepare for the future. This is an online consultation with an option to feedback on all or any of the proposals we've put forward. We have a full comprehensive version and a summary or youth friendly version, and both are available on our website. Starting today, we also have extensive engagement planned with partners to encourage responses throughout the 10 week consultation period from now until the 9th of April. This webinar, it's an opportunity for my colleagues, Emir, Katrin, Oliver and June to provide a brief overview of the proposals within each subject area. Gan bod nifer ohonoch wedi ymuno heddiw, ni fydd cyfle i holi cwestiynau'r lafar, ond gael fyddwch chi ddanfon cwestiynau drwy'r gofod holi y gateb. Byddwn yn ymdrechu i ateb eich cwestiynau ac mi ddydd copi ar cwestiynau ac atebion sy'n codi heddiw i'w gael ar yn gwefan fian ar ôl y sesiwn yma. There are a large number of people in attendance today, so thank you, but therefore there won't be an opportunity for verbal questions. But if you'd like to ask a question throughout the session, we welcome questions in Welsh or English using the Q&A messaging box. You'll find the box at the right hand corner of your screen with a question mark. We don't know how many questions we'll receive, so we will publish the questions and answers after the session on our website. We're also recording this event and a recording will appear on our website shortly after to enable you to rewatch and or share with your colleagues. Diolch a cymlaen ani. Thank you. And now I'll play a short animation before handing over to my colleague, Emir George, Director of Qualifications Policy and Reform, and I'll speak to you later on. Diolch about. Have your say on how our young people become qualified for the future. We want to make sure they're the best they can be. The curriculum in Wales is changing in 2022 and we want to know what you think. In 2019, we asked how qualifications for 14 to 16 year olds should change in the future. Most people agreed that we should keep the GCSE name. We need to know which GCSEs and other Made for Wales qualifications will best prepare young people for life, learning and work. Later this year, we will ask about qualification design, content and assessment. But for now, we want to hear your views about what the qualifications offer at 14 to 16 should be. Your thoughts are important to us and will play a valuable part in shaping the future of qualifications in Wales. Visit our website and have your say now. Good afternoon. Um, can any Edrych Dros uh, Cynigion yn yr ymgynghoriad uh, diwedd ara? We may come with minute neither I just even all draws Peter Kevin dear now well Sonny and Dano and a video now. Uh, good afternoon. Just before we go uh, to look at the proposals in the the consultation we've just launched, 
I'm going to just take a, a moment or two to go back over some of the background and recap on the decisions we've taken so far. So, so some of the, the details that you just heard mentioned there in, in the video. So if we cast our minds back to this time last year, um, we were out consulting then on our high level approach, uh, the, the high level approach we should take to working out what the new curriculum for Wales could mean for qualifications. Uh, I'm pleased to say there was broad support for our proposed approach. And so following the consultation, uh, we confirmed uh, some decisions around how we were going to take forward our proposals. Uh, in particular, we decided that qualifications uh, taken by 14 to 16 year olds should uh, adhere to the following principles. They should be uh, clearly linked to and support the new curriculum for Wales. They should be available bilingually in Welsh and in English, which is uh, um, uh, a bit of a step forward for us in our regulatory stance. So we've gone from encouraging and supporting awarding bodies to make qualifications available bilingually to one of expecting qualifications to be available bilingually if they're going to be publicly funded uh, for school aged children. And then finally, uh, the third principle that we established was that the overall range of available qualifications should be coherent and inclusive and offer something for everyone. So cater to, to all learners needs in that 14 to 16 age range. So those are the guiding principles for uh, the future range of qualifications that we established last year's last year. So I'm going to ask you just to try and bear those in mind because I'll, I'll, I'll refer to them again in a couple of minutes when I've when I've been through a bit more of the background. The other big decision we took on the back of our uh, first consultation was in relation to GCSEs. Now, in, in that consultation, we explored whether a brand new curriculum should mean a completely new approach to qualifications. Is this the time that we should be scrapping GCSEs completely, starting again with a whole new different set of qualifications? Um, it's, it's not what we ended up proposing in that consultation. We were proposed uh, a, an evolutionary approach rather than a revolutionary one. Um, and uh, so we proposed that we should keep the GCSE name, the GCSE brand. And this is something that most respondents to the consultation agreed with. Um, it's a decision that reflects the fact that GCSE qualifications are familiar. They're well known. They're trusted and respected uh, as qualifications, as evidence of young people's achievements. And by continuing to use that well-known brand, we'll be making sure that young people's hard work and attainment is recognised uh, wherever they go next. Um, in sticking with the GCSE brand, however, we were very clear that the current GCSE qualifications that young people are taking at the moment will need to change possibly quite substantially so that they remain relevant and fit for the future. In this current con consultation that we're talking about today, we're looking at which subjects GCSE should be available in, um, as well as other made for Wales qualifications that should be available alongside them. Um, later on, after this consultation, we'll be considering what specific content each qualification should cover um, and how each qualification should go about assessing that content. So if there's one thing to say here, um, you know, the current consultation, it does talk about uh, GCSEs quite a bit and it asks questions about which GCSEs should we have in future. But can I just ask you to bear in mind, perhaps, that when we're talking about GCSEs, we're not necessarily talking about traditional exam based GCSEs that you might think of when you're um, re reflecting on the experience of, of yourself or, or, or your children in terms of um, taking GCSEs. We could be talking about quite exciting new different GCSEs here. On the next slide, I've got uh, a bit of a recap, I suppose, of where we are now and what comes next. Um, and you saw this flash up in the video we looked at just now. So we're in the middle of the screen at the moment in January 2021, just about to start consulting on the future range of GCSEs and other made for Wales qualifications. Um, after this consultation runs its course, we'll very carefully listen to and consider all the responses and then we'll look to make some decisions, hopefully this summer, 
about uh, what we'll do in relation to our proposals, whether we'll take them forward, whether we'll change them in some way, or whether we need to rethink any of them. In the meantime, we'll also be doing more research uh, and engaging with stakeholders to start developing our thinking around how future Made for Wales GCSEs should be designed and how they should be assessed. And as we do that, we'll also be reflecting on whether there are any lessons we should be learning from uh, the experiences of having to do things quite differently last year and again this year uh, in response to uh, the challenges of the, the COVID pandemic. So that will take us then into the next phase of work, which will start at the back end of this year uh, and go on for a number of years. And it's the period of time where we'll then, having decided which Made for Wales qualifications we need, We'll come back out, we'll be working uh, with stakeholders, with learners, with teachers um, and, and other partners to look in detail at how each individual qualification should be designed and assessed. And there again, there'll be further opportunities to consult on that level of detail so that we're trying to get this right, that we make sure that we've got qualifications that really support what this new curriculum is about and support positive uh, teaching and learning experiences. And then if you look towards the right hand side of the screen in terms of where we're going with those new qualifications, we're expecting that the first cohort of learners to have experienced the new curriculum will be entering uh, year 10 in September 2025. So our focus is on making sure that any changes to qualifications and any new qualifications are ready in good time before then so that learners and teachers are prepared for embarking on those new courses, which will lead to uh, the first award of those new qualifications in summer 2027. And I guess just a word of warning, caution, health warning on this time scale. It's based on the current timetable for rolling out the new curriculum. Uh, but obviously we are in some very uh, unprecedented times. So if at any point the, the, the time scale for introducing the new curriculum is reviewed, then we'll also be reviewing our work on qualifications to make sure that they remain aligned. So that's where we are, that's where we're going. If we focus now on the current consultation, our focus, as I've already said, is on deciding what the main uh, choice of made for Wales qualifications uh, should be to support the new curriculum. It's worth remembering that a key feature of the new curriculum is that schools will develop their own local curriculum based on the national guidance produced by Welsh Government. So what we've been thinking about as we've developed these proposals is what the right mix of qualifications will be to allow schools to reflect and implement their own local approaches, as well as what the right mix will offer learners choice and flexibility about what they want to focus on when they're in that 14 to 16 stage, while of course still uh, hopefully underpinning and securing a degree of equity and equality in the kinds of choices they're offered uh, irrespective of where they study. Another key factor that we've considered in developing our proposals is manageability and sustainability. There are only so many choices that schools can realistically offer their learners within the resources available to them. And then thinking a bit more broadly than that, there are only so many bespoke made for Wales qualifications that the system in Wales can support. So it's again, it's about getting the mix right. If you, we, we can't have a never ending list of every possible um, permutation, we've got to try and think about what the right balance is and how we get that right. Uh, we have been very much guided by what's in the new curriculum, uh, its content, its aims and its purposes. And so you'll see that that's reflected in the way that we've grouped our proposals around each of the main areas of the new curriculum. Um, and when you get a chance to look at the detail of the main consultation document, you'll see for each of these areas, we've tried to unpack a little bit uh, about what's in the curriculum guidance in relation to that area. But then we've also taken a look and, and, and done a quick recap of which qualifications are currently available that are related to that area of the curriculum. Because what we really want to do here is also strike the right balance between what needs to change and what might need to continue or something that we can perhaps build on that we've already got. 
this consultation is not about change for change's sake. It's about identifying the change that needs to happen to improve things uh, and, and to bring things uh, into line with the new curriculum. It's worth saying that uh, in coming up with the proposals in this consultation, we have been discussing our thinking and our ideas with a broad range of different stakeholders. Uh, but having said that, they're still very much proposals at this stage. St this stage. This is this is genuinely a, a consultation. We really want to hear what people think. We're doing it now so that we've got time to uh, challenge ourselves to, to maybe uh, make adaptations to these proposals if that's what we hear back from people that are needed uh, before we then get into the business of, of putting these changes into action. One final point I want to make before we get into the detail of the proposals is that uh, the focus of this consultation is on made for Wales qualifications and is very much about uh, taking forward that decision around keeping the GCSE brand. So there's a lot of talk about GCSEs in this consultation, but it is worth just reminding ourselves that um, the qualifications that we discuss and propose in this consultation, there'll be other qualifications available alongside them. So this is not the be all and end all. This is not the whole range that we're discussing in this consultation. Schools will also be able to be able to choose from other qualifications, which whilst they might not be designed exclusively for learners in Wales, they could be very important uh, in meeting the needs of learners who are studying here. And now you may remember, um, it might seem like a while ago when I was talking about those guiding principles that we consulted on and decided last year, that's where they come in. So alongside any made for Wales bespoke provision that we're talking about in the consultation we're talking about today, um, we would want to see other qualifications be available, but in line with our principles. So they should be clear about how they support the curriculum. They should be available bilingually and they should form part of that coherent and inclusive offer that offers something for everyone. So that was a bit more about the background to this consultation. Uh, and hopefully that's that's going to help set the scene for, for looking at the individual proposals. Um, it's worth saying we've got a range of different kinds of proposals in this consultation. In some cases, we're proposing to keep current subjects. Um, elsewhere, we're proposing to consolidate qualifications in, in closely related subjects. We've also identified some opportunities, uh, some possible new qualifications, either new GCSE subjects or new qualifications that might sit alongside GCSEs uh, to support positive teaching and learning experiences. So with that said, we're now going to take a quick canter through the proposals in each of the areas. I should stress that there is much more information, detailed discussion in the consultation documents that helps to try and unpack the thinking behind these proposals to give you a bit more to get your teeth into uh, in thinking about how you want to give us your feedback and your views. Today, we probably don't have time to go into all of that detail. But if you have got any questions, then please can I encourage you to use the Q&A function that Claire was talking about. Post your questions to us. We'll try and respond to as many as we can as we go along this afternoon. And as Claire said, we will be publishing a summary of those Q&As uh, shortly after uh, this webinar concludes. Right. I've probably made you wait long enough. We're going to have a look now at uh, the first group of proposals, which are to do with um, the expressive arts. So here we've got four main proposals that we're asking for views on. The first is that we should uh, continue to have GCSEs in the subject disciplines of art and design, drama and music. And this reflects what we've heard from teachers and from learners about the, the value that they see in having an opportunity to uh, study these disciplines in, in some depth to uh, prepare young people for progressing in these disciplines if that's what they're they're aiming to do um, and that there are opportunities to explore some of the, the the wider aspects of this area of the curriculum by focusing in the main on individual subject disciplines so there's a there's a sort of a proposal here for continuity continue to have GCSEs available in these subjects but to review them and to identify whether there are opportunities to rethink uh, the way in which they're designed, the content that each one covers uh, and the assessment arrangements for each one. The second proposal 
is about uh, introducing a new GCSE in uh, a subject that's described in the new curriculum as film and digital media. So there is this discussion in the new curriculum guidance around um, around this sort of area and uh, we're anticipating therefore that and we're suggesting that there's an opportunity here to, to look at a, a new GCSE that might draw on aspects of existing GCSEs and other qualifications in film and in media studies uh, but then also encompass uh, some of some of the aspects that are covered in the the, uh, the curriculum guidance as well. The third proposal that we've got in this area acknowledges what we anticipate will be some very real challenges um, to having bespoke made for Wales uh, qualification that assesses dance and that's based on the <coughs> quite low numbers of learners that have traditionally taken um, dance GCSE uh, qualifications here in Wales. Uh, but what we're proposing that we can do is to take steps to try and secure a choice of qualifications that do assess dance. So looking at what's out there and then seeking to make sure that they're available to schools and to learners in Wales. And again, thinking back to those principles I mentioned earlier, making sure that the qualifications which are available uh, are available bilingually and are suited to learners who are following the curriculum here in Wales. And then finally in this area, um, we want to try and make the most of uh, existing qualifications that are out there, which offer a different approach to this area of the curriculum and which do give learners a chance to combine the study of multiple uh, arts disciplines and to explore them um, uh, in relation to each other. Very often these qualifications also have a dimension of looking at how, um, how the arts um, you know, looking ahead to, to, to the context of uh, sort of the creative industries in which arts disciplines can be applied in the future. Uh, so again here what we're proposing to do is that uh, we should use the powers that we've got to try and secure uh, some of these qualifications as uh, being available to learners and schools in Wales uh, again in line with those principles that I've mentioned so that there is that equitable offer uh, for all. So that's expressive arts some some continuity some changes there that we're proposing the next area um, that we've got proposals for is uh, for the area of learning of health and well-being now this is a a new and important area of the curriculum and i guess you know the recent events and all the challenges that we're all facing you know never more never more vital perhaps than than it's become in in, in recent months to be uh, supporting young people to develop their own and others health and well-being and that's what this area of the curriculum is all about it's about developing learners ability to positively manage and consider uh, their own health and well-being and that of others and what we discuss in the consultation is that whilst this is absolutely important it's not something that tends to lend itself very well to a kind of national fairly standardized model of assessment uh, it, it's necessarily something that works best when it's fairly tailored to the needs of uh, a school community or even to individual learners um, and that can present some real difficulty if you're trying to uh, develop a, an assessment framework that kind of takes a, a very um, common and consistent uh, approach to all of that so in the consultation we discuss why we don't feel that uh, a sort of single overarching qualification in this area would be necessarily the best way of offering learners a, a positive learning experience or indeed to give schools the freedom they would need to develop an approach that is right for their learners and their communities. So the first proposal in this area is that we don't think there should be a, a nationally uh, designed qualification that sort of seeks to assess the, the, the area, this area of learning uh, in its totality. The second proposal is uh, about the fact that there are a number of GCSE subjects that uh, exist which are broadly related to this area of the curriculum, food and nutrition, uh, PE, health and social care. And from speaking to schools and learners, we know that these are valued qualifications that offer learners breadth, and can help to engage them with learning and to explore the opportunities for for different kinds of progression uh, once they leave school. Um, so we don't see that there's any reason to discontinue 
these qualifications. So the proposal here is that those, those subjects should continue to be available as GCSE and again that we review them to see if there are any opportunities for um, updating them or, or reforming them in, in a way that would uh, help to make more of their connections with, uh, with the new curriculum. So I've covered off the proposals of expressive arts and for health and well-being. You've probably heard enough from me now, so I'm going to pass across to Katrin, who's going to talk us briefly through the proposals for humanities and for languages. Christa Katrin. Um, good afternoon. Um, so starting with humanities, then we have three proposals in the humanities area. Um, and the first one is to review and reform GCSEs in business, geography, history and religious studies. So this proposal would continue to give schools and learners um, a choice of discrete GCSE qualifications. Um, and if we adopt this proposal, um, we would review and reform the content and assessment of the existing GCSEs to align them more fully um, to the new curriculum. And then the second proposal is a new GCSE in social studies. So at present, there isn't a social studies qualification available to schools and learners, and it's mentioned in the new curriculum's humanities area. So creating a new social studies GCSE would place it on an equal footing with the other main humanities disciplines. So this discipline would encourage learners to actively participate and engage with um, social issues in local, national and international contexts. Um, it would give them an opportunity to engage with current events with the important questions of our time. Um, so if we accept the proposal, we'll um, work with stakeholders to develop proposed content and um, assessment for the new qualification. And then the third proposal um, for the humanities area is to develop proposals for a new integrated um, GCSE in, in humanities. Uh, now, schools have told us that they would value a qualification that offers um, an alternative to discipline specific qualifications um, and a qualification that takes an integrated and thematic approach could allow learners to develop um, underpinning common skills and knowledge and see how the different disciplines in this area then relate to each other. Um, however, at this stage, we are only proposing to explore the potential um, design viability of this type of qualification. And this is caught because um, we envisage several potential challenges that would need to be overcome, um, including whether it would be possible to offer discrete GCSEs as well as um, an integrated qualification in this area. OK, then, so moving on to the languages, uh, literacy and communication area. Uh, now, this is a large area uh, and to reflect this, we have um, six proposals. Um, so our first proposal is to create a new combined language and literature GCSE in English and then a new combined language and literature GCSE in Welsh to replace the existing separate GCSE qualifications. And these new combined GCSEs would uh, each be roughly the size of one and a half GCSEs. Now, currently, not all learners get the chance to study literature after 14. And of course, literature is for everyone, not just uh, an optional extra. So we feel that a bigger uh, combined GCSEs um, in language and literature will create more opportunities for learners to make uh, links between the two and will um, help enrich the study of both elements, making them more interesting to study and to teach. Our second proposal then is a new, bigger Welsh GCSE designed for learners in English medium contexts. So as with the proposed combined language and literature qualifications, this new qualification would also roughly uh, be roughly the size of one and a half GCSEs. We are therefore proposing to get rid of Welsh second language and instead to have a choice between two Welsh GCSEs of equal size and status. So this would offer all learners, whether they're in a uh, Welsh or English medium education, an opportunity to study Welsh at the level that's right for them. Um, so this proposal um, also reflects different 
curriculum expectations for Welsh language development, uh, depending on whether learners receive their education mainly through Welsh um, or English. Our third proposal is a set of small Welsh language skills qualifications that can be taken in addition to a GCSE uh, to support progression. Alongside GCSEs, we're also proposing to introduce a new set of bite-sized Welsh qualifications to support the practical skills of speaking, listening, reading and writing to help more learners get confident in using their Welsh. Um, the idea is that they could be taken at any time with quick results to build motivation and support uh, teaching and learning. So with regards to the international languages, uh, we are proposing uh, to review and reform Made for Wales GCSEs in French, German and Spanish. Uh, and this proposal would give schools a choice of reformed GCSEs in the three uh, international languages that are most taught in, well, uh, in Wales. Uh, continuing to offer GCSEs in French, German and Spanish will build on existing capacity and competence in the system to teach these uh, languages. And feedback from schools um, and other stakeholders suggests that there is a case for substantially revamping the content and assessment of these GCSEs. So this proposal offers an opportunity to fundamentally uh, rethink how they're designed and um, assessed. And we will we'll obviously work with um, practitioners to make sure the new qualifications are more accessible, relevant, engaging and appealing. We're also proposing a, a set of small made for Wales qualifications in a range of international languages. So teachers and uh, teachers and learners suggest that languages are sometimes seen as hard subjects. And we're proposing some smaller qualifications to sit alongside GCSEs that could give uh, more learners a taste of language learning and hopefully uh, increase the numbers of students who go on to study languages uh, in later life. So these could make innovative use of digital technology to reflect new ways of language learning and make these more appealing to learners. Um, if we were to adopt this proposal, initially um, we could focus on one or two languages to help trial the approach and then agree a design that is manageable uh, for schools and viable overall. And then the sixth and final proposal for languages, literacy and communication area is uh, access to a range of British Sign Language qualifications. So we'll make sure that learners and schools can continue to choose from a range of BSL qualifications from entry level to level two. Uh, this includes qualifications to support those who are starting or continuing to learn BSL, as well as qualifications designed for learners for whom BSL is one of their um, main languages. So I'll hand over to Oliver now, uh, who will take you through the proposals for the maths and numeracy and then the science and technology areas. Always good, not for me. Thank you. So in terms of maths and numeracy then, so we've got three proposals in this area of learning and experience. Um, and these are firstly, to create a new combined GCSE in mathematics and numeracy to replace the two existing GCSEs in mathematics and mathematics numeracy. Uh, we anticipate that the new GCSE would be roughly the size of one and a half GCSEs. The second proposal is to create a new small qualification that can be taken in addition to the GCSE to assess a learner's numerical proficiency using an on-screen assessment method. And then the third proposal is to create a made for Wales level two qualification in additional mathematics. So I'll now very briefly explain some of our reasoning for each of these proposals. So firstly, in terms of combining the two existing GCSE qualifications into one maths and numeracy qualification, we think that having a single qualification would better reflect the curriculum intentions for this area. This is because the new curriculum does not make a distinction between maths related content and numeracy related content. Additionally, we think that there is efficiency in combining the two qualifications. 
For example, there is some overlap between the existing maths and numeracy GCSEs, which in turn creates some duplication of assessment. This duplication could be reduced by combining the qualifications. We think that the new qualification would need to be roughly one and a half GCSEs in size to sufficiently cover all of the maths and numeracy content. This would make the size of the qualification compar comparable to the maths GCSEs in England and Northern Ireland. Moving on then, so in terms of a new small on-screen qualification to assess a learner's numerical proficiency, we're of the view that this qualification could give learners who were not able to achieve a grade C in GCSE maths, the opportunity to achieve a qualification that gives them the basis for progression to further education, employment or training. This qualification would assess a learner's basic numerical skills in relevant areas such as personal finance in a practical context. It would allow them to demonstrate they have the numerical skills to function in the workplace and in everyday life. This qualification would not be intended to replace GCSE, but be taken alongside it. And in terms of its difficulty, it would be pitched at the grade C stroke D boundary and is likely to be graded pass or fail. We're proposing that this qualification is assessed on screen and could be taken on demand when a learner is ready rather than at a fixed time point. Learners would be able to retake it multiple times and the on-screen method would enable them to get their results faster. And finally, we're proposing to create a level two made for Wales additional mathematics qualification. Additional maths is a popular qualification. Approximately 10% of learners in Wales uh, take this qualification. It provides a strong foundation for progression onto AS level mathematics. Currently, it's not a made for Wales qualification. So we're proposing that a made for Wales version is created, as this will ensure the long term future of this qualification and guarantee its availability through the medium of Welsh. So if we move on to the uh, science and technology AOLE now. So in terms of this area, we have four proposals. So firstly, to review and reform the GCSEs in computer science, built environment, design and technology and digital technology. Secondly, to create a new engineering and manufacturing GCSE. Thirdly, to create a new GCSE science qualification that will replace the existing set of science GCSEs. And we think this qualification is likely to need to be the size of two GCSEs. And finally, to create a set of small science qualifications that can be taken in addition to the proposed new GCSE in science. And these qualifications are likely to be smaller, roughly the equivalent of either one third or two thirds of a GCSE. So I'm now going to slightly more detail on each of these proposals. So firstly, in terms of the GCSEs in design technology and computer science, we're proposing to retain these GCSEs as separate subjects. These qualifications are well respected and offer clear progression routes to post 16 study. However, we would look at the content and assessment of the qualifications and refresh them where necessary so they better reflect the aims and intentions of the curriculum. Digital technology and built environment are brand new GCSEs, which we have only recently developed, and they haven't actually yet been taught in schools. These are forward looking qualifications, which include a mix of assessment methods, including on screen assessment. As a result, we are planning on retaining these subjects. Where necessary, they will be refreshed and reformed as appropriate. In terms of creating a new GCSE in engineering and manufacturing, our recent review of qualifications within the engineering sector identified appetite from stakeholders for a made for Wales GCSE in engineering and manufacturing. Also, engineering is specifically mentioned within the science and technology area of the curriculum in the What Matters statements. And so it seems fitting to have a GCSE in this subject. And then moving on to the science proposals, it's important that the two science proposals are read in conjunction with each other. And um, currently, there are a number of different GCSEs in science available in schools, not all of which enable progression to A-level science. Additionally, not all schools are able to offer all of the science qualifications in the suite. 
Therefore, we are proposing one combined common science qualification for learners. This qualification will be designed to allow progression to A-level sciences and be accessible to the same range of learners as the existing science suite. If this proposal is accepted, we would work closely with stakeholders to establish what content would need to be included within the qualification and how it is structured. We would envisage this qualification being approximately the size of two GCSEs. But for learners with a keen interest or aptitude in science, we are proposing some additional small science qualifications which would supplement the science GCSE. These qualifications would not be essential for progression to A-level, but would enable learners to engage with broader areas of science and make connections between different aspects of the science and technology AOLE and the wider curriculum. These qualifications could take either an integrated or thematic approach to science, or look at a particular application of science, or have a practical and investigative focus. It may be possible that these units could be aggregated up into an extra GCSE in science. That's something we need to look into. Um, so that's, that's the science and technology proposals. So I'll now hand over to my colleague, June, who'll talk about the integral skills. I do apologise, I seem to be having a problem with my mute button. Um, can you all hear me now? Is it working now? Um, in terms of our proposals for the integral skills, we propose that the National Foundation Skills Challenge Certificate should be reformed to make it simpler and more manageable with a focus on assessing the integral skills of creativity and innovation, critical thinking and problem solving, personal effectiveness and planning and organising. As we move forward, we will build on the strengths of the current qualification, which we feel there are many, and we will, by taking a broad look at the curriculum, ensure that the contexts through which these skills are assessed add value for learners and complement the rest of the qualification offer. As yet, no decisions have been made in relation to the National Foundation Welsh Baccalaureate Framework, but this will be considered as we engage with stakers as we move forward in the coming months. Emir, back to you. Dear June. Um, so the next thing I just wanted to briefly mention is that today, of course, we've only really got time to to sort of uh, do a real whistle stop tour of the proposals uh, that are in this consultation. And uh, if you weren't already aware, I'm sure it, it would have brought home to you that there is there's quite a lot in here uh, and it will no doubt take you a little bit of time to to digest it. Uh, to discuss it hopefully with others uh, and and to hopefully give you uh, the benefit of your views. So uh, mindful of that, we've got a series of further webinars planned that will allow a little bit more time to get into a more detailed discussion and question and answers uh, around the individual proposals. So there's, there's webinars for each of the uh, areas of learning. And again, we'll be doing uh, English webinars and, and uh, Welsh medium webinars as well. So on the slide here, you'll see that uh, you've got the dates there for when for when we're planning to hold them. And there's more details on our website in terms of the timings and so on for you to be able to uh, sign up to those if you'd like to get the chance to uh, hear a bit more in a bit more detail about specific aspects of the proposals. Um, I think we've had uh, a few questions through. In fact, I'm scrolling through here. It looks like we've had more and more as we've gone on. Um, a number of them, I think, are uh, specific to different areas. Um, there are some more general ones. One of, one of the things that's come up a few times I can see here is, is about uh, the size of qualifications, because in some of these proposals we do uh, try to give an idea about what some of the proposals might end up looking like in terms of um, qualification size. Now I should I guess say that 
we're not or we're quite careful hopefully in the consultation not to say that we've got a, a fixed idea about how how big some of these qualifications might end up but we have tried to give an idea of where of where they could end up so that people get a sense of of what it is that we're talking about um if we do end up with qualifications that are say roughly the size of one and a half of your average gcses then there'll be a need for us to look more closely at how that is communicated to stakeholders what that means in terms of how uh, learners grades are, are recognized so that there is a clear understanding about what each grade for any given qualification represents um, but but there you have it so it's uh, it, it's not that we are uh, completely wedded to a particular way of doing things we're just trying to help um, explain if you like some of the different ways that we could end up doing things if we take forward some of these proposals one or two people have commented along the lines of um the difference in in some of the proposals uh, in each of the different areas of learning um we've deliberately if you like or we've we've not sought to try and have a very neat and tidy one size fits all approach that will work in each and every area of the curriculum the proposals reflect the fact that we've tried to look for uh, what we hope is the best uh, balance of provision in relation to each area of learning based partly on what's in the curriculum and partly on what we've got at the moment in terms of where we might go next so we are aware that that it may sometimes appear that um, it isn't all um, all the same for each of the areas uh, but we have tried to make sure that um, that there is a, a, a sort of um, a fair approach and, and a consistent approach in terms of the thinking that's gone on to reach the different proposals in each of the areas. Uh, I'm conscious that we've been talking at you for quite some time. Um, there are uh, a number of questions here that we will be preparing. If you haven't already had an answer to them, then we will be putting all the answers together in a, in a little summary of the questions and the answers. We won't be putting your names on the questions, but you'll be able to see the different questions that have come through. We'll do our best to get those answered uh, and published uh, in the next few days. So I think that's probably enough from us around uh, what's in this consultation. I hope we've um, whetted your appetite and uh, given you something to think about and hopefully encouraged you to take the time to uh, give us the benefit of your views on uh, these interesting and important decisions that we're contemplating. Claire. Lovely. Diolch Emyr. As Emir said, there'll be further opportunities for more detailed discussion on the proposals over the next 10 weeks. You know, these are proposals. We can see different opinions coming through on the chat and we'll be continuously monitoring the number and the range of stakeholder responses that we receive as we go and in order to make sure that we reach as many people as possible um, to gather feedback on these proposals. The Welsh webinar, as we mentioned, is on the Monday, the 1st of February at 3.30, if you want to come again or if you want to encourage colleagues to attend and other specific area of learning and experience sessions, as you've seen, are coming soon and there'll be details on the website where you can register. Um, we also have a, lot, a host of resources on our website. We have the slides that you've just um, seen today, so you'll be able to continue those discussions um, with colleagues. And we also have a host of other resources, um, so the video, the animation, some social media graphics that you can use to stimulate discussion with your colleagues um, on the way forward and the proposals. We're also working with a number of education and young people edu organisation partners to make sure that our reach is wider than what we could do if we worked um, by ourselves. The recording of the webinar it will be on our website on Monday and please consider the proposals and have your say again responding to the full version which actually gives you options to just go to certain areas um, that you're really interested in or you can complete the full consultation or there's a summary uh, youth friendly version that's uh, really easy to use and you can input your responses directly into that version 
but we do look forward to hearing your um, views on the proposals and we would like to hear them before the 9th of April. In the meantime, follow us on social media. There's already a debate out there on some of these proposals, so get involved, let's hear your voice and we'll be posting regular updates um, on the journey to the 9th of April. So thank you for joining us today. Your time is welcomed and really appreciated as we understand everyone is busy. And a cavamsar, the Ochama Minna Hedu, Kovio Hilen with Holyatir, Kin and Alvid Eprich, Erin Krono, Erin Shown, a Kitrachanum Line at Achweld, a Kluidach Barn. Dioch, please stay safe and hope to see you in one of our other events and let's keep in touch. Hulvaur.